Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So today I'm working on this Iron Man piece and I figured I would uh, share some of the process and probably draw some of the background here. Uh, and you guys can chime in and let me know what you think if you got any questions. And yeah, I'll just start working on this and see what we get. Hello, hello, Icon, Top Dubs, good to have you back. Tubs, dubs, I need to pronounce that, right? Hi, Marissa Jones, good to have you. So, in this one, I've got a new setup here. I actually ran some bars across the top of my art table, or this, uh, this isn't really an art table, but flat table, camera over top. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying a, another setup, constantly trying to maneuver this stuff and get something that gives me the best uh, representation to show you what's going on, so the best view for you guys. <laughs> Hi, I love to draw. Me too. It's always fun. So I figured I would talk about the background, but you know, if we need to, we can share some other bits of advice on this. I don't do enough uh, background work with um, traditional, and I'm trying to get back on on the wagon there, doing it the right way. It's just so much easier with digital tools, but there's a lot to be said for traditionally drawing it, right? And let me know if my uh, hand's covering the work. I'm trying to. Um, I'm hoping by this new setup, like that, it's my hands not going to cover it as much. That's why. I mean, this this setup is crazy. I got like uh, Velcro straps holding this all together until I get some more parts from my um, my Amazon shipment. Your lefty too, Marissa. Cool. Thanks, Mr. Grinch. My line works crazy good. Appreciate that. Very nice of you to say. Yeah. And, and Dino, uh, I can't say the rest of that, so I'll just say Dino says, the dude has gray hair now. Uh, I've actually had gray hair since I was 25. I, when you see me in other pictures where it's not gray, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not real. I went gray early in life. I think I was full gray by about 20, 25. I don't think I I think I had some back and forth, you know, salt and pepper till about 30, 28, 29, 30. But yeah, still really early. Yeah, thanks for all the nice comments, everybody. I wonder if I would see that side of the building. I'm trying to study this perspective now. So what I did here is I laid in the perspective lines first, so three-point perspective, and I set this on my larger art table, put a vanishing point way off the top, two off to the side, uh, low. So a low horizon line, like we're looking up at the character, um, and then drew all these perspective lines. And then from here, I can just sketch in some buildings. I'd like so. Sun and studios. This is the first time I've seen you in person. Yeah, I'm usually not on the camera much, but um, I'm trying to trying to bridge the gap a little more. You know, do a little bit more of this. So um, you guys have been cool enough to support all the stuff I do. Figure I can be a little bit more personable, and it's basically the way everything's going, anyways, right? Zoom calls, live streams. Yeah. 
and hopefully it'll help the learner experience. You know, if you see me actually doing the work, um, maybe that'll help bridge the gap a little bit more. All right, Eric says, uh, hey Rob, you inspired me to get Clip Studio Paint and start drawing again. I stopped at the end of high school and wanted to pick it up as a hobby again as I graduate college. Well, yeah, good job, Eric. Please keep with it. Um, I'll tell you, I stopped for a while and I basically, uh, I basically uh, took too big of a gap out and I wish I wanted to did that, you know, hindsight 2020 and all that good stuff. Um, I really recommend that you stick with it. Do what you love, follow your passion. Uh, you know, you find out through the, uh, the journey whether or not you're going to, you know, do exactly what you thought. But it doesn't mean you have to, even if it's not exactly what you thought, uh, it doesn't have to not be art, I guess. Because for me, it didn't exactly turn out to me drawing comics at this point for the big guys. But at the same time, I get to draw for a living. And I predominantly just draw comics. So, uh, I mean, shoot, I even ended up putting a book out on it. You know, so um, make your own future. You know, pave your own road. Keep at it. Don't give up. Uh, I wish I wish I wouldn't listen to the naysayers back in the day. Like, you know, get a real job, kid. I'm like, yeah, right. A real job is whatever you make it to be. If you work hard enough, you can turn anything into a job, I think. But a lot of people look at art and say, well, it's just not, I, I don't know, not these days. I'm talking about some old school thinking like, you know, these days there's so many opportunities for artists. I don't think people have that same stereotypical negative nanny attitude. <laughs> Ghetto bot Kilpatrick. What's up, brother? Good to have you here. It's my buddy Luke disguised as Ghetto bot. When I met Rob, he couldn't draw a stick figure. That's not true. In high school, remember the hand I turned into a turkey? I traced my hand, I made two characters. Traced my hand, I made Hamburger Helper. There's one, it was a class project, and I traced the other one and made him into a turkey. So that's not true, I could draw pretty good when I was tracing my hand. I feel professional as I use them same pencils, nice. Yeah, you can't beat this lead holder. But I do. I have been switching more to my mechanical pencil as I go. But, but yeah, the lead holder. Something about this makes you feel like a pro. You know, like you're wielding a an amazing device, an amazing tool. The sword of the comic industry. And the only reason I draw with this one is I picked it up from David Finch. Watch him doing a mic. Well, if he can draw amazing pictures with that, then maybe I, too, can draw these amazing pictures. And got an A. Yeah, that was hilarious. You did, Luke did this big full-page spread of, like, Garfield and John. You know, it was, like, tied together with uh, string, right? And he opened it up, and it was a beautiful full-page spread. But we had a, a art teacher that was a, a coach, football coach. And what do you write on there, Luke? Something like, I don't get it. And then it, he opened it up and he goes, oh, now I understand, or something like that. <laughs> he had to like open it up and realize it was an open page spread. Dude, you put your heart and soul into that one, but it, it was amazing. Amazing artwork on that. Yeah, can't can't forget our high school, man. Flint Northern was awesome. Or it had its, uh, it had its moments, I'll say that. Yeah, glad you guys are digging the Iron Man. I'm still, I pretty much finished him. Not always. I got to render him some more. Uh, and now I'm doing the background. It's mainly because, you know, it's almost like I do what I feel most comfortable with first, and that's the character. And then the background I kind of shy away from. But um, I am forcing myself to do it today, live. But it's not that bad. You know what I do to make it a little easier? I draw these little doodles right here. See this? So I feel like if you draw this off to the side, uh, which a lot of times these come out better, I don't know why, but um, then it gives you something to feel more confident about. You know, so those little, just like with this one. Here's one of, you know, I'm not done with this, so you guys don't judge me, but here's one of Superboy. I've been watching uh, The Titans. Actually, pretty good show. 
Um, even though I feel like the neck is too long, hands a bit weird. But anyway, see I did a little thumbnail right there off the side first, and then I used that to kind of work over to here. The portions are a bit wonky too, but um, but yeah, I love that series. Uh, it's just, there's parts of it where the acting is, yeah, I don't even wanna say the acting. I think the actors are pretty good for the most part. Some of the storyline is kind of cheesy. And then some of it's really good. I don't get it, like, but hey, good with the bad, I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, and Luke says, and I gotta see. That was totally wrong, dude. You know that. We know that. You deserve an A. I don't know what he was thinking. I think he was just trying to get me on the football team. No, that's definitely not it. You would have definitely been the one on the football team, no doubt. All right, so, or you were. I think you were at some point, weren't you? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, you know, I'll continue to bring them, man. You guys continue to watch. I'll bring the videos. Wow. Thank, thanks for that. Um, I cannot say your name. I'm assuming that's Russian or something else because I can't, can't recognize the, uh, the text there. But saying that is very nice. Speaking of favorite artists, my favorites are Robert Marzullo, David Finch, Trent Kanuja. Uh, Jim Lee, Mark Burnett, Aaron Blaze, and lots of others. Man, to even be in, mentioned in that lineup is fantastic. Go so. That's very nice of you. Yeah, I if I can be half as good as any of them artists, I'm I'm gonna be terribly happy with myself. Uh, yeah, Jim Lee, David Finch, those are some of my favorites right there. Mark Burnett, amazing channel. Trent does some really neat stylistic work that I can't touch. Aaron Blaze, I mean that dude's on a whole nother level. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so I should probably draw a little bit more on this building instead of trying to read every comment. Look at my little scribble there. So I wanted to mention too that once you got these perspective lines in place, you, you can kind of guess here and there. You don't have to measure and draw everyone specifically. Uh, I do a lot of guessing. So I think what I do is I work in the bigger forms first. And then from there, I just kind of, you know, I, I, I know that if I divide this area up into uh, four, that's probably what this is. And I also have to make sure to widen that out uh, proportionately. And there's ways to get that just right. Like you can cross over, cross your corners, find your center, blah, blah, blah. You know, but you don't got to do that every time. Just kind of wing it. And like anything else, if you're a little bit unsure about this portion of the process, uh, draw lightly and then just slowly, uh, I think drawing lightly helps you a lot so that we're, you're basically not committing too early on if you're not sure about the design. And then you can just work, uh, work over top of it and fix things as you go. So yeah, drawing lightly, is, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. I think this is looking too repetitious. I don't want the same building going all the way down here. So what I'm going to do is probably cut into it about here. And I can either add to this building or just uh, draw a different style of building over top or in front of, I should say. And I think that's what I'll do. So I'll put a heavier line right here. And that's just so that I get this feeling almost immediately that there's something more in the foreground. Because, yeah, this is too much repetitious, you know, too much of the same thing. It's kind of boring, right? So I'm going to break up this area. Bring a line straight down here. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. Uh, Kale Productions, do you draw more um, on digital or paper on digital? Uh, you know, actually what it is, is I draw, I've drawn more on digital, more digitally for the past, God, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years, you know, a while, right? And I've recently had a bit of an epiphany. And that is that I'm never going to be able to sell those. Now, 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 here's the weird thing. So I did all this digital work, right? And I love digital because, like, for instance, uh, 
like this piece, right? His head, the neck just still looks too long to me. I'm gonna drop in a jawline a little more. So changes like that, I could simply select that, move it down, right? Um, but the drawback is I don't end up with that tangible piece of artwork, that coveted piece of artwork that I can sell for millions of dollars or a couple hundred bucks, times are tight. So I don't, I don't end up with that piece of artwork, but um, now they're doing what's called NFT. Have you guys seen that? Anybody? Uh, I think it's NFT. And there's, it's, it's something like Bitcoin. So you're selling a one-off copy of a piece of digital art. Uh, I'm going to sound silly because this is going to date the fact that when I said this, I'm probably going to be wrong just like it was on cryptocurrency uh, or Bitcoin or whatever it is. Um, I didn't buy it and I don't buy into this NFT. I'm probably wrong. Uh, you can generally not take your uh, investing advice from me. It's probably a good idea. Um, so at any rate, there is that. So even though I'm, I'm starting to go back towards digital now, or sorry, traditional, um, it doesn't mean that it should purely be because of the fact they don't have the originals to sell. I don't know. There's another part of it too. There's a certain amount of, of a creative vibe that I feel like I get more with traditional. You guys have said it. I see it. I just feel more confident with digital because I can maneuver things so much more easily. So, yeah, it's a mixed bag. I'm, I'm going to start going more to traditional again, actually. I'm going to keep doing digital, don't get me wrong. Like, I've said this in many videos, I don't feel as confident um, inking. I, I feel I feel better inking digitally. Uh, I'm, you know, traditional is a close second, for sure. And there's some pieces that I actually really enjoyed inking uh, traditionally. Certain pens that I really like using. Uh, Bristol board's awesome with you know traditional eggs. You just can't beat it. But uh, but color, no question. I'm just not a traditional colorist by any stretch of the imagination. So for me, that's all digital. So I'll never not do digital. And uh, there are certain ones where I like to you know compile them together. Um, so I'll be doing that as well, where I take the traditional sketch, finish it digitally, things like that. But I'm gonna start doing all my pencils traditionally. Lately, I've been getting more frustrated trying to draw digitally. I don't know. It's, it's like they um, keep changing uh, the settings too much for my taste. You know, about the time you get used to something, they start updating it. <laughs> Pen, uh, I can't say it. Penquerto? Penquerto? NFT will be hot for a while until people realize what a worthless scam it is. Harsh words. No, it's, it's hard to believe. You know, I... I I'm all for somebody supporting an artist that they admire and that one off kind of does that, you know, so I send you a digital file. You're nice enough to help out and support you buy the artwork and I've done digital artwork for people. So in a sense, it's similar to an NFT, I guess. Um, so I guess the idea is NFT. You can't I'm trying to read through some of these in case I'm wrong and you guys are going to pre-correct me that you can't um, produce it in any other way. You get that one off NFT digital kind of like a digital cer certification uh, certification for somebody all right um bill of sale i don't know something to that extent um i have got to research it more but i mean does that really replace getting a piece of artwork you know i i could see it being another add-on to what's there but i can't see it replacing it i don't know i feel like Traditional art is going to, about to take a, a huge leap uh, in value. And in fact, there was a podcast by Rob Liefeld that I caught. I didn't caught most of it. I think he caught it all. But he talks about that pretty heavily. I suggest you look, you know, look it up. It's on his podcast. And he talks about the rise in traditional art value. It's been uh, increasing quite significantly. And, I mean, it makes sense, right? Where we spend so much time... Uh, pushing all this stuff to digital works of art that what's going to happen to the uh, traditional stuff it's going to become more coveted and I don't ever see that going away I couldn't see how well I mean as more people transition to digital it's just going to make the traditional art more coveted and more valuable
going off perspective there. I do not like this building. I just don't like it. And this is why I generally do like drawing my backgrounds digitally, but what you're witnessing here today, folks, is me saying, no, I have to, I gotta do it. I just gotta learn how to draw traditionally again. Well, you guys are all coming back and forth. Well, let me read these real quick. Um, ever mess up or change your mind about the background and cut the figure out and paste it in other places? Yeah, and in fact, as I start to do more of this traditionally, I, you know, I'm going to be using my light table more and more. And I think I'm going to bring you guys a video on that where I show you the process for utilizing something. Like for instance, even this background, I could totally lay out the grid uh, on a, I, I got cheaper 11 by 17 copy paper, right? Lay out the grid, draw out a few scenarios, you know, utilize more of what I do here on the rough sketch, these smaller kind of thumbnails, because they always seem to come out better. Uh, even blow those up and then kind of piece it all together with the light table onto uh, your illustration board. Yeah, because like this building, I'm totally not digging it. It looks very boring. I think it's a repetition in the windows. Um, I should just try to work on the Avengers building a little bit. More interesting structure, but I'm definitely going to need some reference on that. All right, Icon, uh, let me read what you're saying here. Please read. I know so many types of, so many types of way to do a pose, and I don't know what is the one you use. I'd like to know if you, how you do a normal standing pose. Um, yeah, I mean, I can show you real quick. Let me grab a scrap sheet of paper here. So a normal standing pose. Um... Probably a ground plane first. I mean, a lot of times I don't, but it's usually a good idea. Uh, just something to relate the character to. And so for a normal standing pose, show my camera here, start with the head. Uh, one way you can do it is you can measure eight heads down. So you go two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. You can do something like that. Um, you can go eight, eight and a half. You know, it depends on the character type. Um, I'm assuming you're gonna, <clears throat> you're saying like a normal standing pose on an angle, right? Does that sound right? Comment quickly. Um, this is 70 pound uh, 300 series. I also use the uh, for for the Bristol board on the Iron Man piece. That's the Strathmore 200 series. Okay, so uh, for a standing pose like this, let's say that we're gonna angle the character. Okay, so the feet are always like kind of an L shape standing or something like that. So you got a foot over here, a foot over here. It's just good to think about this. Uh, let's see, two heads down is roughly the nipple placement. Now I'm gonna do this on an angle though. So let's, let me just throw in the major forms. Four heads down is the lower pelvis. And then for the, the legs, I typically do a forward bend, find the knee, and really the upper leg is a little longer, right? Upper leg's a little longer. Uh, really the upper leg from the side, the hip down to the knee, is roughly from the collarbone to the lower pelvis. So you can take this distance here, bring that down. I'm gonna work it slightly into a perspective. I guess since the horizon line's down, it would be more like this. And then I do a forward bend and a back bend. Just bring the shoulders over here. Kind of a V shape. If it's a, a male character, then I worry about more of a V like shape here. Thinner uh, hips, more of a bell shape or hourglass for a female. And then let's see, it's gonna be on a bit of an angle. Probably should bring that torso out more. 
and then arms just kind of relax to the side. The waist gives you about where the elbows are. I do this lightning bolt thing like that. So I'm not sure about those knees. Yeah, I'm gonna bring the leg way down here, make the legs longer. And also, like right here, it, you know, the character feels very stiff, right? Just kind of, you know, a little too plain. Um, and if I'm trying to incorporate a little feeling of perspective, I'll put one hand higher over here, one hand lower, just like I did with the feet. Collarbones, same thing. So it's kind of a little bit of this continuity to that. Um, but then the posturing is a bit plain. So what I like to do there is think more about the spine. So the spine needs to really come in and curve back here like this. And these other forms need to reflect that. So you can draw in the rib cage. Get that bend there. The uh, pelvis can be tilted down more. That. Make sure my camera here. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you guys. Sorry, my camera shakes there for a bit. I got this thing like set up like just craziness, but it's uh it's working. And I've got elbow room now. I never had that. That's why I never hooked up the other camera because I had just too crazy of a setup. Uh, but it's getting a little better. Um, <laughs> hands look like manis blades. Hey, the praying manis is my favorite bird, favorite insect. I mean, come on, an insect that prays, that's, that's pretty awesome. Okay. And the females decapitate the males after mating, which is pretty crazy. I'll be honest, when I found that out, they, they, did, they did go down a notch in my book, but whatever. It's nature. It's beautiful, right? Beautiful and scary at the same time. Okay, so I'm just trying to get in. I'm actually just kind of testing this out. So I want to bring his head back. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, when I draw this oval there, that's not really the head. That's like a placeholder. All of this is still a placeholder until I get these shapes right. So don't think that when I draw something, I'm like, oh, this is where it goes. This line goes here. This one goes here. No, it's like I'm just... It's like I'm moving stuff around until my imagination clicks and goes, oh, that's what I'm trying to see. Like, it's not, these are, these need to be, uh, what's it called? Searching lines. You're searching for the right shapes and forms. And I think when you start to think more that way about your process, you, uh, you do a little better, but yeah, it takes practice to think that way. First, you're just trying to make everything right and getting all frustrated, crumbling up paper and you don't need to do that. I'll tell you what, that is another reason why I started to feel so compelled to go digitally because there was no more crumbling up of the paper. So that's a big deal, but I don't know. There's something about it, the feeling of drawing on paper. You just can't knock it. I don't know why it's like I, for so long there I was starting to um, only admire what I could do digitally. And then I just started to feel like, no, I need that. Somebody somebody wrote it on one of our last live streams. They said, it's more this is more of a tactile experience. And I'll be honest, that comment went right over my head because I'm like, what's tactile? I don't have a dictionary handy. Uh, but since then I looked the word up. And I agree now. It is. It is a tactile experience. Um, now another thing when you're drawing a basic pose like this uh, I'm going to redraw that head it's not right the next too skinny I've been drawing too many skinny necks lately um, make sure that your torso and your pelvis they can be 
I guess in this kind of pose, it could be oriented about the same. I don't think that's a big deal, but the head should definitely be different. And it could be different just by looking at us. It could be a profile shot, but it generally will uh, make something like this look a little bit more interesting. I got that one leg looking really big. Got a few awkward things. Let me give him some feet first and then I'll redraw it through it. Uh, Jake Kell says, you kind of look like Michael Scott. I'll agree with that, even though I have no clue who Michael Scott is. Now I'm going to end up Googling Michael Scott's. What if I picked the wrong one and I look like a totally different Michael Scott? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Looking like Michael Scott. Okay. Uh, man, my favorite insect is none of them. Nice guy. Good comment. Hey, man, just bought a couple of Udemy classes. Very nice suit. Thank you, Tony. I've already learned a ton. Besides, wait, why not? I'm sorry, the comments move. Besides your book, Hogarth, and that old Marvel book, any other books you suggest? Um, yeah, um, goodness. Why am, I, why am I drawing a blank here? Forgive me, it's the old age. Hey, that other book. It's all dusty on my shelf. Um, Goodness, you mentioned Hogarth, but you didn't mention uh, Bridgman. Goodness, definitely pick up Bridgman. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I, Mike Nagujin. I, I really appreciate that. Um, Mike, you've never watched The Office? Definitely watch The Office. Great show. Oh, that's Michael Scott. Oh, nice. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, no, I love The Office. I just don't know all the actors' names or characters' names. That Michael Scott. All right, I feel like the pelvis is up too high. It looks a bit weird. Let's drop that down. Widen out the shoulders. Yeah, I'm really shocking people with the gray hair. My bad. I probably should have dyed my hair before going live. No, I'm just getting tired of doing it. Um, but yeah, people are like, who is this dude? Doesn't look like the Rob we have seen in previous videos. In all actuality, I've been gray for a long, long time. But dying is a pain. Sometimes you just got to own up to the fact that you're a gray-haired old man. Or maybe you don't. I, I have to. Yeah, I'll get back to the Iron Man here in a second. This is, uh, somebody wanted to see how, to, how I would go about drawing a standing pose. I deviated a bit but yeah so essentially there's a quick standing pose probably the trickiest part I think about these is getting the leg orientation right so I generally draw the legs a couple times till I get what I think looks somewhat correct And I still don't like that. Imagine that. Center line to the chest. Bring that out and down, back. Rib cage. Yeah, let me bring the head more, a little lower. I'm not covering the artwork, am I? Yeah, 
Yeah, I think at some point I am going to need a moderator though, because it is tough to like draw and then uh, stop and read the comments. But then if I don't read the comments, I feel like it's kind of pointless doing a live stream, right? Like, isn't that kind of the point? Yeah, Loomis is another. Did somebody mention Loomis? Yeah, of course. Loomis is a fantastic book. I say get them all. You know, just, just get them all. Get all the books. Draw every picture twice. I mean, that's what it takes to be a really good artist, right? But, you know, these days, you know, the books are fantastic. And you learn from the masters, which is great. Uh, but I, I got to admit, we are very fortunate to have a ton of great video content out there. And I'm not just talking about mine, people, which you can check out on Udemy, Skillshare, Gumroad, and on my own site. No, I don't mean just that. I mean, like, you know, I just got off a call with David Finch. Fantastic artist, doing amazing work, bringing out amazing classes. I mean, I know you guys all know about him. If you watch this, you watch his channel. He just released another Skillshare class on... Um, uh, facial expressions. I'm, I'm taking that one right now. I'll make sure to submit my project for my grade. But uh, yeah, just awesome work, you know? And, and the list goes on. I mean, it's not just David Finch, it's Jim Lee doing his thing. And then you got uh, master classes by all sorts of people. You can go on Gumroad and just find all sorts of amazing artists doing these in depth courses. It's just nuts. I, you know, I, I don't know. I think maybe that's. I don't want to say it replaces books, but it's definitely a hard call to make. Like, I, I, I learn better by watching somebody do it. You know, if I'm sitting there struggling with something, and all of a sudden they start drawing something that I'm really struggling with, to me, that connects the dots. You know, I've, I've done home repairs because of YouTube videos, okay? I am not the guy you want to see doing home repairs. But I've done it, and everything's fine. Everybody's safe, don't worry. But it's all because of YouTube videos. And I know that because I go into Home Depot and the people are looking at me like, dude, you shouldn't be here. I don't think I should be selling you this power tool. But they do. And I take it home. And then it collects dust. No, I do, I do some home repairs. But alright, so here's how I would draw a standing pose. You see I was avoiding the feet. Let me get the feet in there real quick. That one's really big, and I always draw a big foot. But then I fix it. Legs awkward. I, I usually have to draw the legs. I think I already mentioned I draw the legs in the, the pelvis a couple times because I always get the proportion drawn there. This arm needs to come down a little bit more. And FYI, when you're drawing the arms, just think of the wrist lining up with the lower pelvis and then add the hand. So that'll usually tell you if, you know, if the proportions are off. There it is. And it's still a bit weird, but I would just keep redrawing it until it's right. That's why it takes a lot of patience to be an artist. Okay. And I just okay yeah so good point there Tony saying I just love having the drawings in front of me and you can't do that easily with videos true but video courses are a bit different like if you've got a, a good video course generally they are going to submit PDFs like I have PDFs what I've been doing lately is I'll make the course and I'll make the section and I'll put the PDF right in there and what I want to start doing is actually making slides or PDFs that go hand in hand with that particular lesson so when you open up that lesson, like you're saying, you know, you get that visualization of somebody drawing something, but then there's maybe some actionable step-by-steps or, you know, uh, just like a book. When you open up that book and you have those step-by-steps, you know, I got my How to Draw Action Heroes book, which took me six months and I don't know. But yeah, these are those actionable steps, right? Step-by-step, -step, you know, draw this, draw that, add this, right? Um, but it's... um. You know, watching somebody do it in real time, as long as they're not yapping too much like I am right now, um, is, is pretty cool, pretty effective. Can I get a fire? Gamer Sing? Sing? <laughs> What's up, Angel Gomez? 
You're in a bit of a mood, aren't you? Sup? I don't swear on this channel. Sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Just, just don't. Just don't. Okay, this building is absolutely ugly. I don't know why it is, but it is. Um, let's try a different one. It's so weird. They're just rectangles, for God's sakes. Just a bunch of rectangles. Most of them. Let's just try to change up the trim package here. Bring this all the way across. hire somebody else to draw my buildings or better yet just steal them from other people's art <gasps> well that's what people do Picasso right is it Picasso wait steal from other artists something like that or maybe not steal I mean maybe I said that the wrong way how about not steal let's uh let's put it as grow and learn from other artists But you know, once when people get in those really tight deadlines, you know, they're just busting out the light table and tracing. We all know it. Watch that movie by Kevin Smith. Everyone's a tracer. Don't do it. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody coming downstairs. Yeah, I can relate. Tony says, I've <laughs> been freelancing as an illustrator recently and I've been able to avoid drawing people for as long as I can, I possibly can, but now I can't hide anymore. Yeah, same here with buildings. It's like, you know, and that's why fan art can be such a, you know, it, it's easy to hide with fan art. I can just draw what I want right say oh this is my vision I wanted to draw it this way no and then what do I do I turn around I don't draw enough buildings and then I get on a live stream and I start to struggle with buildings not cool but I am dealing with the issue and I'm going to get through it so please forgive me if it's a little bit slower than should be um, now this, this would be a perfect opportunity for me to just draw these buildings digitally. And then, um, you know, I'm still gonna finish this piece regardless on traditional, uh, but I could draw them digitally, get this perspective going, um, and then bring it over to here. I, I, I'm fortunate I got 11 by 17 printer, print it out on that, jump over to the light table, and uh, piece it all together on a Bristol board. You know what? Where's my iPad? I know this is horrible because this is going to be traditional, but I just want to show you what I'm talking about if I can find wherever I put my iPad. Oh, it's right here. So let me see if I can show you how I bring these together. Okay, so let's see if you guys can see this. All right, so I've got an 11 by 17 screen there. Let me clean that a little bit, it's a little dirty, sorry. It's embarrassing. Okay, so let's see. So what I did for the perspective was this. Basically a triangle, okay? And what I could probably do, which would be better, really in a sense, is scan this piece first 
bring it in, transfer it, all that good stuff. But I don't think I need to do that. Um, you know what, maybe just snap it with my phone. Let's try that. Uno momento here, people. Uno momento. It's gonna be too hard to scan, so I can just do a quick snapshot. Kinda quick. Come on. Okay, there's that. And I'll transfer that to the old iPad via Bluetooth. Makes a little sound of magic. And let's see, I gotta import this in. there uh, yes you can just draw 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 all yourself okay you guys are talking amongst yourselves I think which is good yeah you can snapshot with the iPad itself I know it and I should because you know what these new iPads you see what they have now look at this this is the newer iPad you guys see that look at that camera three lenses on the back and it's a lidar lidar scanner which means a 3d scanner amazing Technology on these things is insane. But uh, yeah, let me import this. Sorry for the delay here, people. Bear with me. I think it'll be worth it. I hope. Okay. So anyways, I brought that into the 11 by 17. I'm going to draw on this iPad with my regular pencil. No, I'm not. Just kidding. You thought I was going to do it. Okay, let me turn this around because I noticed the button is... You guys see that? Okay. So first things first, I usually distort this into place. I'm going to do something like this. So by that, I mean first I size it up roughly to the 11 by 17. And then I grab and hold. It's got to be on free form. And then I pull that to the corners. It's not a perfect process, but I don't need this to be exact I just need need to be closer really I should have cut oh, I did copy it first okay it's good to copy it first because procreate is different than like say Photoshop or clip studio if you extend the artwork past the edges it immediately crops it unless they've changed that let me show you what I mean so if I scale that down see how it's already cropped so you want to make that copy because if not you're kind of working into a destructive banner so okay so I got my basic perspective there to play around with and then I'll try to add the perspective tools over this which again three-point perspective um, so let's do this canvas where's it at drawing guide edit drawing guide perspective do, 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 do. Where at? just drop them in so one way up here one down here one down here it's essentially what I did on my art table I'm going to pull this down because the horizon line detaches. doesn't really matter, by the way. Vanishing points are vanishing points. You can put them wherever you want. So now, this is the only tricky part. Is you got to, like, zoom it in and move it around and try to extend this out. So I find that I'll compromise on where I really want the perspective sometimes uh, based on how tricky this part is. Uh, I'll be honest. You don't find that with Clip Studio. You can put these vanishing points all over the place, wherever you want. There is a, a little bit more of a limitation here, but it's still not bad. It's still, I think some of my best perspective drawing has come out on this because once you get everything set up, it does get uh, a bit easier. Uh, generally, another rule is this. If you want your perspective to have less distortion, you, can, you put your area of artwork inside your grid. So, uh, and whatever that is, it could be a two point, whatever it's, it's Essentially, picture this was triangulated, like a triangle, not these indents here. And if your artwork's inside of there, it's going to have less distortion to the perspective. And more means, you know, more of that confined in that area will mean less distortion. So you just make your perspective 
lines out further. But if you're going for something distorted, you're gonna bring those in more tight. Just like if I lower this, those buildings are gonna recede uh, qu more quickly up into space. Uh, I think roughly about there, let's try this. Okay, I'm gonna actually right at the end, I change that uh, color, I didn't mean to do that. Come on, there we go. Okay, so that way you can see them pretty clearly. And so now I add a layer, drawing assist. Okay, and let's try this now with uh, a little bit of perspective assist. Let's see if I can get this drawing going a little bit better. Yeah, and I feel like I did need to, yeah, they're just, they need, that top perspective needs to be adjusted. So this is the one nice thing about it too, you can move these around on the fly, where, you know, when you're drawing it, you kind of have to deal with it a little bit differently. All right, assist it again. Like I said, I want to put a building up closer here. Want the Avengers Tower back here. And so what I'm going to do first is just kind of box in a few of the shapes. Because the Avengers Tower is definitely not boxy. It's got curves all over the place. So I'm just going to use kind of some reference shapes for alignment. I'll put the A back here somewhere. This kind of peaks up more. Let's see, something like that. This part comes out. So yeah, like right there, even though this is going to be an oval, a lot of times I'll draw a square first. I'll find center, and then I will uh, put a layer in place, and then I'll just draw a curve and hold it. See how it snaps to a curve like that? And that's basically how I'll build in the, um, the curvature. I'm going to take assist off here, erase that back. Let's see that, and that'll give me that platform area or whatever. So little things like that are kind of how I work up there. Yeah, so uh, another thing I want to keep mentioning is that I'm going to be doing an, um, another art contest. I, I mentioned it in the last live stream, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to structure it for you guys, but it will be fun. Um, but yeah, a li uh, an art contest, and then um, I'm going to do cash prizes, I think, and maybe a tablet. But I don't know. I, or maybe You know what we could do? Cash for maybe the first two like 150 and the third one could be like um, art supplies, you know? Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that idea. And yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what we should do, what we should draw. I mean, you know, I kind of want to be selfish and be like, draw my character Blackstone, but that's, we did that already. I don't want to do that again. Uh, I don't want, you guys to get so bored with my ideas and it seems a bit selfish like draw my character and you can win a prize that's not right that's just not right but maybe we could just pick a character or I could do like a, a real rough script of some kind of concept I like those I did that in one of my courses and it was fun to see people's take on it. I did an ogre and I explained what the ogre would look like. And then it gives you a chance to, you know, get those imaginative gears of working. What if I'm not an American? I mean, I don't mind get cash, but you know, how am I going to change it? 
Yeah, I don't know how that works. I mean, I guess I got to look more into that. But it, there's got to be a way, right? Is it that big of a deal to send uh, cash through? Oh, yeah, I guess the exchange rates can really mess things up. All right, I better do a little bit more research on this. Yeah. Script sounds good. All right, cool. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun one. It's, it's a lot easier for me to uh, to gauge that as well. I say, hey, here's a script, and, and it'd be neat to see how many people re-envision the, uh, the script their own way. I think that's a great learning experience for everybody, you know? Like, one of the ones I want to do, hopefully one of these days soon, is I want to draw uh, some uh, Spidey work off a script that's already been done. But I want to find the script not look at the book and that's probably going to be the tricky part it's got to be a book i haven't seen i don't want to look at it i preferably like to know the artists that did it so i can you know see how well they did you know certain artists i like more than others but but it needs to be a book i haven't seen at least one i don't remember i guess probably not seen and then i want to draw a few pages of it completely and then go pull this, the actual book you know i think that would be so neat to look at it and go wow this is yeah, yeah, I can really gauge and learn from what a pro in the industry did and, and how far off that was from my own vision. Uh, I think that'd be a fun exercise. So I've been meaning to do that one. It's just, you know, finding the time. So I feel like right here, what's what's hurting this is I'm making it feel like this building right here is just too, up, uh, too small. So you got the Avengers Tower. It's going to be pretty large back here. I need to pull some reference because I don't remember what this thing looks like, even though I've watched the movie over and over again. Or the movies. Oh, and Invincible's out today. I totally forgot about that. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm super excited to watch that uh, animated series. All right, I got some reference here of the tower. And mine is way off. Actually, goodness, no, there's a few different versions of this sucker in there. Yeah, there's a bunch. God, that's why a reference is so tricky. Like, I would assume the movie version, if that's what I'm looking at, would be the best. Okay, so there's... Yeah, so another thing I tend to do is take the drawing assist off. Here and there, draw in some of the elements that... I feel are going to be a little bit more freehand anyways. But yeah, what's cool about this is once you get, I'll tell you, the, the part that I do like about drawing uh, perspective digitally, okay, is the fact that when I'm drawing on a bigger sheet like this right here, um, I have to think bigger. I have to draw differently, okay? One of the things that's nice about this way anyways is that certain things, if I'm trying to work on the concept, I like to work back here. And so that becomes very easy digitally so that I could say, well, I'm not digging these buildings here. Let's get them out of there. And I'm, just, yeah, I'm off perspective because what I should have did, I generally do was always start with a sketch. Uh, but again, I'm going to work a little bit further back. Is that a little sketch I had? And again, I feel like this building right here needs to feel pretty massive. Even though the tower, the Avengers Tower, is going to look way bigger, I feel like this can't look too awfully small right here. It still has to be a pretty, pretty large structure. So to the side there. But yeah, so it's it's kind of nice when you can mix it up and draw some of this really small especially for the sketch portion of it, and then come back as you clean it up and uh, 
you know, tighten up the work. But yeah, so what I would do here is try to get some of these. And that is an ugly building too. Goodness, what is it? Ugly, ugly buildings today, folks. I'm gonna have to pull a reference. I should already do that. I got the Avengers building over here. I should just look at that, finish that. That's on a different layer, isn't it? And the side piece has like some smaller windows and details. Oh, you know what? Yeah, and this part right here, the bottom of this ledge to this angle piece fits into the A. That's pretty cool. And here I'm going to draw an A on an angle. Kind of an upshot. And add another little shape in here. Draw a circle and hold it. And this is the absolute best part of the um, working digitally so that your circles and ovals are a lot easier even though that one went off for some reason usually doesn't just do it like this draw it up to the side like a circle edit shape circle grab the shape distort it into place now let's see it's smaller than the A Mm-hmm. Like that. And then there's some uh, trim like windows to the side of this if I'm looking at the right one but it curves up like this and there's some other windows right through here looks like there's two sections of this and I never realized how detailed this building was until I decided to draw it but you know you could get in some aspects of it and then simplify it right i would probably go for like this area right here all these windows actually go back to this a it looks like so we definitely get that in the a shooting over to the bottom ledge here that's definitely a major design element some more windows down here but then you start simplifying you can black in all this bottom part i don't know what the bottom of this looks like i would probably just fake it probably shade it in is that like their helipad or something? So yeah, it's not like it's all got to be exactly to the... And the other thing is the curvature. So in this one I'm looking at now, that's weird. I must, there must be different versions of this because the one I was looking at before, this area right here was a lot more of a, a curve. But on this one, it's definitely straight up and down. And then this bottom portion goes like this. Comes off this area right here, down like this. And this here it jets out on an angle. Something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of little details to this structure. And then more windows across here. Hmm, as easy as I thought. All right, let me read through a couple of these real quick. Sorry if I'm ignoring the comments. I'm trying to focus. Hola, Emma. Who's your favorite billion? Billion? 
I don't know why, but I like billion, billion, oh goodness, I can't talk. I like billion, billions, billions, way more. Ethan's hero, they look cooler to me. And then you guys hit, put, are putting the lizard. Yeah, I don't know. I love villains too. Uh, big villain fan. Venom, Thanos. Um, Doom. I can't say I'm as much of a Doom fan. I mean, I like Doom. But, yeah, I would say it would have to be Thanos, um... Hmm, Magneto. He's probably an all-time great villain. You know, I think I like Thanos and Magneto the most. You know why? They they have this... What I think is cool about villains is when they have some noble agenda that they think, or they think it's noble. They think that they're right and the way things are going are wrong and they've got to be the one to fix them and give the hard, the hard love kind of thing. Um... And, and do something dramatic to change the world or in Thanos' case, existence. Something about that is so scary, you know, like that they that they think they're right and they think they're actually coming from a place of good, but everybody else knows they're just frankly psychotic. Um, I think those are the best villains. And then the ones that do bad just for the sake of doing bad are kind of boring. You know, there's not a lot of depth there. The story and the, the character itself. So, so yeah, I think I think for those reasons, Magneto and uh, Thanos are pretty good, pretty good villains. Like the guy just trying to take over the world. That's like, eh, you know, it's boring, right? I mean, if we wanted to watch a story about somebody trying to conquer the world, we could watch Pinky and the Brain. Because that's who I want to see conquer the world. Yeah, Tech Pen. Uh, no, for sketching, I actually use the technical pencil. But I guess that could have been your abbreviation, Tech Pen. I always think that there's a, there's a Tech Pen for inking, right? But yeah, technical pencil. Um, but yeah, so anyways, this is what I would do to work through it. I need to pull some reference and figure out some different building designs. It's so weird because sometimes I just think of ideas for it and other times I keep drawing the same stupid building pattern and that's what tells me I need to pull reference or look at some comics or both. But then once I got this into place, I'll remember too, you can toggle off the uh, drawing guide so you don't have to look at that in your way. Once I get this thing working with the basic shapes, I can go back to, you know, bringing it back to here with uh, 11 by 17 paper on the uh, light table. And I can keep working on this. So, yeah. Just because I'm probably going to do that in that way. Let's work on Iron Man a little bit more. Before we call it good. What time are we at? Right, we got a little more time. Uh, favorite paper to sketch on lately has been the uh, 300 series. No, sorry. 200 series. Goodness, I got so much paper, I can't remember what series. Okay, the vellum. Let me just show you. How about that? Bam! See that? Medium surface, Strathmore, 70 pound. Yeah, good stuff. But I will also... Um, sketch on um, 
a cheaper paper as well, especially for ideas. I got different sketchbooks that I kind of do different things in. And uh, generally when I've got something I feel is a bit better idea, that's when I bring it over to the Bristol board. Let's see. Excuse me once again. Is it allowed to draw a bit, a little bit messy and wobbly in order to draw faster and say that is my style? I mean, maybe I really could develop such a kind of style, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to draw clean and tight work. Uh, I think that a lot of times, style, you know, you get, you, um, you can make a really nice style with more loose and, and um, energetic lines. Okay, so uh, I tend to think of lines like like energy. So if you have like, all right, this is a, a robotic suit, right? A robot suit. So I'm going to use a lot more angles. I'm going to use a lot more clean lines. And my style typically, for the most part, is generally pretty clean. Uh, I usually have to try harder to do things that aren't clean, things that are more organic and loose and um, which is weird because I should have been able to draw buildings better than I did here, but um, but that just means reference. But then something like this, you know, I've drawn enough of this type of stuff where I don't pull as much reference. But even even still, you know, Iron Man's suit has so many different suits. It's so good to look at reference for the character. Uh, but I think it just depends on what you're what you're drawing. Uh, but no, there's a lot of great styles that are very loose and energetic. Lots of wobbly lines. It's not, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this stuff. You do what feels right and what you're good at. Generally kind of takes the forefront because you're good at it. So what do you do? You're, you're proud of it. You show up more, you do it more. Um, that's just kind of the natural process of it. But um, yeah, I think there's there's a lot of energetic styles where they're not as tight or as clean as other artists, but uh, generally when you tighten up the work too much, clean it up too much, refine it too much, it generally starts to stiffen up. So yeah, just, uh, yeah, see some, some people are commenting, some other artists to check out. Is it possible to do a double page spread in Procreate? Yeah, you would just uh, take the 11 by 17 document. Uh, it's good if you have a um, uh, page template and then you can widen the screen by double the pixel data or 11 by 17 if you're using inches and make it what, uh, 11 wide becomes 22. But then you take the document, like you can even scan one of these pages, right? So it's got the bleeds and a lot of them will tell you where the overlap is for a double page spread and you just kind of sandwich those together, then you can condense down your uh, your canvas size. So that's all it is, it's just margins and proportions, really. Uh, best way to study anatomy is to always study anatomy. And I don't know, just when you think you got it figured out, realize that you don't. That you're, I don't know, to me personally, you're always gonna be learning anatomy and you're always going to have to revisit it every so often. If you're like me, um, where's a part of a character I just, I'm trying to think what I was just working on. I don't know, it's, it's a constant. So shoulders are always a pain in the butt. 
uh, legs are always a pain in the butt. Like, so to me, it's, you know, I'm just never going to know it. I'm just going to keep studying it. Um, but the main thing is you just don't avoid the things that you know you need to work on. You know, that's, a, that's what people do. We, typically, what do we do? We procrastinate, right? We say, ah, I know I need to paint the living room, but I'll do that. I just spit on my eye. That's so gross. Um, I'll do that next week, right? Because I don't want to do it. If I wanted to do it, it already got done. And and that's how that's how we, you know, and then what do we do? We work hard on something else. We procrastinate. We avoid it. And then we tell ourselves, well, you know, I don't want to do it now because I work so hard on these other things. I deserve some time off. Yada, yada. It's like this cycle of procrastination. So, yeah, you got to look at the things you need help with and you got to go for it. You got to study it often. And, uh, yeah, we don't like to do that. We like to just bask in our glories of the things that we're already good at, which doesn't really help us grow that fast. Like these stupid buildings in the background. I'm going to have to really, I got to sit down and draw a bunch of buildings. Gotta do it. But I just don't like it. That's what's sad. I, I, you know, I draw buildings because I have to, because they, they need to be in the scene. I can't just draw characters on the back, you know, on the canvas all the time or flying around, stuff like that, fighting each other, whatever. But the buildings are boring to me and they shouldn't be because there's so much cool architecture and design and buildings. Um, but they are, they're also hard for me. So what, again, that's why I kind of avoid them. Oh, gotcha. So I'm confused because some people say study the skeleton. Some people say study gesture first or break it down to simple shapes. What do you do? All of it. I mean, it's, it's all, you, you can't have one without the other. You can't draw cool figures without understanding some gesture. You can't draw cool anatomy without looking at anatomy books. There's one by Robert, uh, Roberto Asti. It's on my shelves over there or somewhere. I, usually, I look at it often. He does some really great breakdowns and anatomical uh, detailing that I think is really well done. I've got a course on it. Obviously, I'm not trying to push you on my course, but I do have an anatomy course. But the thing is, is that it's um you, you gotta you gotta do it all. So you gotta do figure drawing, real life studies, draw from other artists. I do. I'm a big fan of building things out with shapes. I know I did that a lot here because why? He's very geometric in style, so. It really fits on something like this. Um, but then there's times that I'm... Um, like that one of uh, Superboy. It's not the greatest drawing. I'm not done with it yet. But it, it was it was worse than this. I was refining it. And I got a little bit better. But it's still not right. Um, but I started here. This would be my gesture. My rough sketch. My thumbnail. And then I started to draw this. And I'll tell you. Even at this point still... I still like this more than this. This isn't right. Like, so a lot of times you can put all this detail on top of it, but if the overall gesture and the underlying uh, curvature of the spine, the forms aren't working, perspective, different things, then it's just not. It's still not going to be as good as it could have been. So you, I can't say just study one thing or study one thing before the other. I, I would say if I had to say study the first thing first, it would be gesture, but it all links together. I don't think you're fully going to get gesture until you start doing more and more life studies so that you see how, how much people can really bend and contort. Oh, you know what? Here's a post I just shared. It's not very advanced, but maybe it'll help you. You can do a screen grab of, of it or you can go to my Instagram. So I just shared this one the other day. Okay. So I share stuff like this on my Instagram, on my um, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. I don't think I shared it on Twitter. But anyways, stuff like this is, is what I practice all the time. So when I'm not drawing something like this, I'm drawing these. Okay? And they're just basic, simple illustrations to practice what I'm talking about. And so what I like to do is when I see, uh, it can be a model, it could be a dancer, it could be something on TV. If I see a really cool pose, something that just hits me like, yeah, that's, that's a good one, that's a good one. I stop what I'm doing, I pause on that or whatever, I grab my pad and I draw just a quick representation of it. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a full rendering to grasp what's there. You know, how, how a bend is occurring, how a cool arm pose looks. You know, you, you see this cool perspective shot somewhere. 
you got to stop and do a sketch of that. And that's how you get better at it. You don't, you don't get better at it just by looking at it. You got to draw it. I think that's a big part. People misinterpret uh, sitting around studying things. Oh, I look at things all the time. I really look at them. No, you got to really look at them and you got to draw them. And that's why most people just aren't drawn enough to get better. Or they're drawing the wrong things or they're drawing the same thing over and over. That's the one I combat or I'm trying to combat that I, I see in my own work. Um, yeah, I can look at my portfolio and go back and go, oh, I gotta you know, keep drawing Spider-Man. That's cool if I drew for Spider-Man, but I don't. So I need to mix it up. I gotta draw different characters. I gotta draw different types of scenes. Um, yeah, I gotta vary it up. Or I'm gonna quit growing. It's just like working out, you know? If you don't shock your muscles, they don't grow anymore, right? It's the same concept, really. You have to, you can't do the same thing over and over again and expect uh, progress. How do you make a studying schedule and routine, especially if I just, if especially if I want lots of stuff to do, like art, music, animation, writing, and so on? Uh, you just make the schedule by dedicating a certain time, and it, and sticking to it and it can be small at first it can be a half hour a day of straight drawing shut everything else off no social media no tv so that you know that you're doing a full 30 minutes on that drawing and then you do that again and you slowly add increments to it it can be weekly um yeah you just you just have to stick to it you got to be realistic too you could sit there and tell yourself all day long oh yeah i drew for eight hours yesterday but did you really draw for eight hours or did you you know, get sidetracked. I mean, shoot, even now I'm sitting there like I'm doing a live stream. So I'm not drawing the entire time. So I need to be realistic about that. Because if not, it can be, um, I can be deceiving myself, uh, which leads to being more unproductive because I'm actually telling myself, oh, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm spending this amount of time drawing. And since I'm not being realistic, then it's going to make me more frustrated that I'm not at, uh, attaining my goals. Because I'm not being honest with myself, you know, about how much time I'm really putting in. Yeah, so Kingdom Comics says, I know anatomy really well, but then I focus on that so much. Uh, but when I was actually drawing a comic, I noticed that I often slowed down drawing wrinkles, folds, and clothing and apparel. Yeah, no, totally true. It's I'm I'm in that same boat because um, a big part was when I when I was trying to get better for comics and I was going to shows back in the day before I kind of veered off and now the shows aren't as prevalent. But I was going to these shows and I was showing my portfolio and I remember I got in a line for I want to say it was Marvel and I remember looking at some of the other artists' work and their stuff was just stunning. Like I just I didn't realize how good I wasn't. Okay, so. I thought I was better than I was, but uh, I remember getting that harsh bit of truth from somebody saying, you need to work on your anatomy, kid, or something like that. Probably not in that voice, but it sounded, sounded funny. Um, and yeah, I was just like, I was distraught. I was destroyed. Like, really? I thought my anatomy was pretty cool. It's funny, now looking back at that work, I'm like, oh, what was I seeing? Like, I, just, I was blind to my own errors and mistakes. And um, they were totally right. I was not ready, and my anatomy work was horrible. Um, but what did it do? It, it put this thing in my head like I have to work really hard on learning my anatomy. And I mean, I don't know how many years I've spent on just drawing different parts of uh, the body, studying muscle groups, trying to get proportions right. And I'm not saying my stuff is some, you know, anything close to some amazing. Um, sense of perfection and no such thing. It's not perfect. I'm still learning just like you are. Uh, but they put a lot of stress and frustration on me for to improve that. But yeah, so now I get to certain parts and you know my buildings are lacking or I'm sitting there going to draw uh, clothing, like you mentioned, and the wrinkles and folds aren't coming out as good as they could. You know, So uh, one thing that I think is helpful to combat that when you're drawing on comic pages is uh, for one, the thumbnail. Obviously, I'm always going to go back there. Make sure your thumbnails are fully worked out. Take as much time as you need to redraw your thumbnails. You wouldn't think that would help you, but it helps on every aspect of the work. But then also is try drawing 
start with a whole page or maybe a series of pages, two or three, draw all your poses first, right? All your big boxy shapes of your perspective first. So staging the work can help you in so many ways. It helps with productivity, for, at least for me. Uh, some people are better. They want to draw a whole panel and finish that panel, move on to the next. I don't like doing that. Uh, I mean, I've done that. It doesn't work as well for me. Uh, but what I am good at is getting good at a certain thing, like, and, and knowing that when I'm drawing something better, taking full advantage of that. So for instance, today I'm feeling good about my poses. They're all coming out good. Something about poses is clicking today, right? So what am I doing? I'm going to jump into that, those pages, work out all those poses, because I already got my thumbnails in place. Poses, same thing. Today I'm drawing good buildings finally. You know, jump in, do all the buildings, all the backgrounds. Uh, and I think that it's a lot easier to process the work that way I'm not saying you're going to have any hiccups because there's going to be panel changes, things like that, things that don't work out the way you hoped. But you can go in a lot more specifically and you can say, okay, man, why am, I, why am I not getting this building right? So you pull up a bunch of reference. You make yourself a mood board. You start getting the shapes and forms working. You look at some inspiring work by some other artists that you like, and they're doing that well. So you check that out. You implement that. And it's working there, so you're warmed up to that. I think it makes more sense to, like, go through that those sequence of pages and do that one thing while you're warmed up to it so same thing with clothing you know you get you get warmed up to drawing the folds right and then you go through and you you know you work over those mannequins that you drew your poses and you get all the clothing going i don't know to me that seems like a more functional way to get through it um so i'll let you know because i've been trying to implement that more in my own work because i, I experienced the same thing a lot of stop and go because I feel good about one aspect of the work and then I get to a certain pose or a certain uh, problem and what do I do, I go, oh, I'm not drawing it so good. Let me start another piece here. Let me draw a spawn for a bit. And I got like two or three of these images going and I shouldn't, you know, I just need to knock it out. And But you know, that's why comic page work is a lot different than drawing pinups. And that's why you gotta challenge yourself to do both. But uh. Like all you poor folks that have supported my Blackstone comic. And I noticed one of the comments was like, have you ever drawn your own character? And that's terrible because I, I guess I don't do a good enough job promoting my character. But I have a comic called Blackstone Eternal. And uh, yeah. Book one is out and available. And book two should be out anytime. And it should have already been out. Okay, do you have any tips uh, about adding shadow and shading? Uh, I'm not sure about the difference. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. Like on something like this, it's just a matter of, I would say my primary light source, if you were to look at the this surface right here, right? See how all this is in light? So I'm, I'm explaining that the primary light source is up here somewhere. Okay, so up over here to the side. The reason why I have this shadow and shading right here, it's chrome, so I'm thinking of the, the curve of the chrome, and then the other side starts to catch more shadow, but I'm also paying attention to the light source down here. Let me make sure I'm kind of pulled up some reference here. Yeah, you can't see it, can you? So see that? It's got these thrusters or blasters or whatever Iron Man calls them. And so I'm, I'm picturing that some of that light is coming up and bouncing off the edges of some of this. Maybe that's not as accurate. Generally, when you do a dual light source like this, it's generally like uh, it's good for those shots where the character's on top of a building. There's that under light from the city, things like that. Uh, but that's that's really what I do. And for Chrome, I almost always do this repetitive thing where I do a big bulk of shadow, some cross hatching, some swirls on the other side. I, mean, I might even take that right through the, the waste area here. So kind of define like a bit of light source like that. I can put more of a drop shadow from his uh, this rib cage piece. I can put a large shadow on all these pieces right there probably. But I'll tell you what, like um, I'm just gonna be honest. Like for for light and shadow, uh, check out David Fitch's channel. His work is amazing for that. 
Uh, I don't know what it is about the way he does light and shadow, but it's just on a whole nother level. Um, yeah, I, I can't really think anybody else better to point you at. Um, tons of great content for that. Oh yeah, Rich, you're going into the abbreviation of it, I, or the uh, definition. I don't, yeah, I guess I've always called shadowing and, you know, rendering is the cross hatching. Shadowing, yeah, I would say the bulk of the shadow. Um, shading is what he calls rendering. Yes, that's that's what I would call rendering, all the little cross hatching and doodling. Um, but I, I'm pretty simplistic about it. So like for right here, I would say, well, there's got to be some kind of break in the shading. And this probably isn't right, but if it's if it's not something I'm entirely confident about, I'm just going to draw a little bit lightly, get some of these shapes and ideas working. And I don't know. I've seen styles where they just put rendering wherever. Some of, Sometimes it looks really cool. I think it's just really the, the way you execute it. I mean, I do think it looks better if it makes sense to the forms. Um, but then again, if you're not good at that yet, and I can totally relate, shading isn't my strong suit, uh, but it looks better than not putting it in there. I mean, shoot, some styles, they don't even render. They just uh, throw in, like, really good color work, you know? So that's, that's another thing to do, too, until you start feeling more confident about laying in these larger shapes of shadows you could just uh, you know play around with the color work and it's kind of the same thing like if if it works in color um, you know it's all light source uh, again Bern Holgarth does have a book on light and shadow I do recommend that one so maybe what I'll do is uh, on the channel here I'll bring some I'll do some studies uh, while working out of those books. Those are always fun uh, videos. But yeah, I, I kind of just throw in rendering here and there. I don't know. Play around with the ideas. If it doesn't work, that's why God made erasers. Icon says, how do I make my drawings more believable? Um, more real life studies. You know, take the time to draw more from life. That's that's always going to rein in your... You know, I always look at it like this. If I want my stuff to look more realistic, I'm going to do more portraits. Even though um, that's not immediately going to jump into my work, I guess. But it, it works its way in there. So I, I study more portraits. And actually, I've been meaning to get back on that, especially for faces. Um, porches are great to kind of re-familiarize yourself with, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't, I guess. But then, um, I don't know. I study a lot of artists that say you should draw from comics. And I think that's important too because even though it's not going to teach you as much about realism, it's going to teach you what's working. And uh, I think that's very important. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Nathik. And Josh Draws, hi from Canada. Hello. Good day. Good day, Mike. Oh, wait, that's Australia, sorry. Hi. Is there a lag? No. It says excellent condition over here. Man, and I put a hard line connection, you guys. I have, I've tried my best to fix everything, so if there's a lag... It's YouTube's fault.
Yeah, plus I think that if you draw portraits of, I mean, think about how many cool superhero characters we have to pick from. There has never been more great reference and just all the comics. I mean, there's just a plethora of reference. And, um, oh, not on camera, am I? Sorry. Still getting used to the setup, but I like I like the setup a lot more. Um, but yeah, just tons and tons of great reference, whether it be movies, um, TV shows, animations, games. That's uh, just insane. So you just got to find the styles that you really like and then rework, you know, redraw them. Like you have to redraw them. Like at least ink them. You know, just find some art you like by an artist you like and ink it. I mean, that's that's a great experience, a learning experience. Uh, but then the other thing is, don't just do it. Don't just try to study things in one way. Do that, and then do some breakdowns of it. Like one I'm doing for composition right now, right? Is I've been taking different uh, comic shots that I like. I always feel weird bringing this to the channel though, because it's not my art. I think it's fine because I'm trying to teach you guys and help you guys grow. So I think it's fine, but I always feel weird about doing it. But I, this is what I do. When no one's looking, I take uh, artwork that I like and I do compositional breakdowns of it. You know, I look at where they place the building. I'll do that because this I'm struggling here, so I'm gonna do that for this one. I'm gonna look at some shots like this. I'm gonna see how they place the buildings, where they use their shapes and their forms, and then compositional breakdowns are really nice. Uh, and then I will draw aspects of it. I will look at if I again if I see a cool arm, cool pose, whatever. I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm going to draw a, uh, a version of it. It doesn't have to be detailed. Um, yeah, I think that's just the hard work part that people take for granted. Like everybody just assumes that people that are, that are drawing uh, a little bit more detailed artwork that they just, they can pull everything out of their, their brain box. And that's just not me. Like, I mean, maybe there's people out there like that savants that are really good. Uh, and you know, they just, you know, everything's right out of their imagination. They never need to refill the tanks. Uh, yeah, I'm not like that. I need to study. I need to, uh, look at work that's better than mine. Dang, I'm off the camera again. And, um, I'm sorry. I got to mark some safe zones under my camera and then I'll quit doing that. Forgive me. Oh good, no lag. All right, worried about that. I freaking ran like a hundred foot cable from my box down to my basement, just so we wouldn't get any lag when we do these. Um, all right, so let's see this other leg plate. I don't think I'd see the other piece right here. What was the other question I missed? Sorry. There's a bunch of these. What is your setup? Yeah, Josh, can you be a little more specific? Are you talking about the cameras and all that? I'm going to assume you're talking about the cameras. I got a Lumix G7 overhead pointing down at the artwork. I'm using the factory camera. <laughs> That's what you say it. The camera from my iMac. Uh, right here, use an iMac 27. I don't know what that is. It's a big iMac. It's one of the, I think it's a 27. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, for YouTube. Uh, settings for YouTube? Goodness, I don't know. Oh, you're talking about for the stream health, maybe? Stream settings, um, hmm. Low latency, I don't know. I'm using OBS Studios. But yeah, I'm not gonna jump into the settings right now, but I use OBS and the only thing I see over here is low latency and the uh, stream key. You're doing new. Okay, I'm gonna keep drawing here. 
Getting distracted. Just glad my hands not blocking the artwork as much now. So glad I moved this camera. And I think if I add another lens to this, I'll be able to really get some nice quality on the artwork. Yeah, let me ask you guys that. Like, um, is the um, is the artwork high high quality enough for you? Is there a good clarity on it? It looks like it is from, but I'm like, you know, viewing it on this other screen. It's pretty good quality, right? Because I've got the camera further away than I did last time is why I'm asking. Oh, good. All right. Looks great. Okay. Uh, the anatomy book was by Roberto Asti. O-S-T-I. Uh, the thing I like about his is he's got a very concise way of teaching it. But I also think that you should look at other ones like uh, Bridgman. Bridgman... You don't want to take Bridgman literal in the way that he illustrates it, but it's uh, great content. So I would definitely look at Bridgman as well. Um, yeah, I think with anatomy, you have to pick up a few different books and you have to get the ones that are medical illustrations, basically, those types of breakdowns. Uh, you can learn the terminology. That's up to you. I'm, I'm not really talking about that. I'm saying that it's almost like you have to see it done a few different ways to really figure out what's going to work for you. At least that's what happened with me. I didn't just like start getting it right away. Um, and then pay attention to comics because there's a lot of little tricks where they don't always draw every bit of the anatomy. Some styles are pretty loose and interpretational, we'll say, to anatomy. And then other ones are very, very good and very specific. Uh, I like Dale Keehan, the, the way he uh, draws anatomy. I think that dude, he's got a nice mix of it. It's definitely stylized, but it's all the right anatomy. It's all pretty correct. Uh, he just stylized it in a way that, you know, it's a really neat mix of, you can tell he knows his stuff, but then it's not realism. Because for me, uh, realism seems almost a bit boring, like for comics. I want, I want something that looks stylistic and inventive and... A little crazy, a little wrong, I guess. Um, like Todd McFarlane style. I mean, that's there's no realism there. I mean, he knows this stuff as well, but uh, you can tell he takes it way into the realm of what can I imagine? What can I make exciting and crazy about this? And it works. And it's worked really well for him, right? Yeah, Dale's version of the Hulk is like... I, I mean... Put it this way, I think that you can definitely see in Avengers how they zeroed in on his version of the Hulk. You know, if you look at the different iterations of Hulk, to me, the one they landed on with Mark Ruffalo is is definitely his version. But but yeah, all time greatest Hulk artist for sure. Oh, no kidding. So Bravo, Bravo Delta just said Asti has a dynamic anatomy book coming out next month. I did not know that. That's cool. Sweet. Yeah, I like his work. But yeah, like I mentioned, you have to really check out a few different... Um, a few different versions, I think. But I'll be honest, my first one that got me going was Bern Hogarth. 
And the reason why is I've always been a, a big uh, Mc, you know, McFarlane fan. And I remember watching uh, one of his videos somewhere. I don't even know where it was. I don't even think there was YouTube back then. But um, maybe there wasn't. And um, he had mentioned uh, the Bern Hogarth books. Or maybe I was reading an article, something. But he mentioned, you know, the Hogarth books. And that's, wh that's why I picked them all up. And shoot, I've bought two copies of those suckers now because I gave some out, lost some. Not my second, at least my second set of copies. And I still can't believe some artists I've talked to just, they, they don't recommend Hogarth. And I'm like, wow, it blows my mind considering his, his illustrations are so dynamic. I guess some people think he's not good to study from because he's got maybe too much distortion but I don't know I, I look at that and go isn't that strange oh it's comics like there's just tons of distortion it's um yeah there's just so many artists that have lots and lots of stylistic uh, interpretation to their anatomy But I guess there's a difference when an artist can, um, they can draw it well, but they choose not to. I think that's, you know, something that people tend to be able to pick up on. Um, I would imagine that's like somebody like Sam Keith. Uh, he draws a very distorted, stylistic uh, version of his characters, but you can you can still tell that he knows anatomy. He just chooses to draw it in a very imaginative way. So what is that saying? Learn the rules and then learn to break them like an artist or something like that. First learn the rules. Can't just start by breaking the rules, I guess. Okay. So I think that's most of this for the hand and in the hand I could probably I would shade the back of the hand right here because it's got this you know strong light source under the hand so all those shadows are going to get pushed onto the back Hmm, already 148, that's crazy. Cross, uh, cross stitching, you're saying cross hatching, I imagine? Yeah, so the other thing too, the endurance thing, I don't know if we touched on that. Um, you know, it's just being patient is a big part of it. Um, but yeah, it's because I don't think it's so much a physical endurance, but I'll tell you what, uh, a big part of it for me is making time to, uh, to work out, do other things, take walks, because if I don't, I'll get frustrated sitting in this chair. So one of the things I notice when I make time to work out, whether it's 20, 30 minutes a day, I go for 40, um, I notice that I can sit in this chair longer and I don't get my anxiety doesn't kick up. I don't get all flustered and, I don't know, stressed out. Because uh, one of the things that's neat about, and it could be any time of working out. Don't think like when I say working out, you gotta go start smashing weights or something. I mean, you can, if you like smashing weights, but um, you can jog, you can stretch, yoga, whatever you gotta do. Uh, but the main thing is that you're challenging your body in a sense, and what happens is, because you're, you're I think the way that I've heard it put that made a lot of sense is, Whenever you're challenging your body in a, control, in a controlled stress environment, it alleviates stress elsewhere in your life. And I think that's such an important thing to, to realize about being somewhat physically active. It's not always that you're doing the physically active thing for the immediate gratification of looking good or that moment of what you're doing. 
it's the other benefits that come with it. Like sitting in a chair for freaking 12 hours. Like, I don't think you should do this stuff for long periods of time if you're not taking care of other things personally. And that goes into all the other things of balance in life of like, you know, obviously taking care of your house, your family, your relationships, things like that. Uh, easier said than done, but it's those are things that you have to make time for, right? But uh, yeah, for me, I feel like I can tell an immediate difference if I'm taking care of myself, eating right, working out, things like that, then I can sit here, uh, I don't know, it's night and day. But if I'm getting flustered, uh, one of the things I'll do is I'll just get up and take a walk or I'll read a book. Um, sometimes I'll just break off and play a video game, but I gotta be careful of that as well because I feel like if I'm rewarding myself for not getting stuff done, then that's kind of set, <laughs> set me up for failure, you know? like. Uh, I, I'm not doing good today. I'll just play video games. No, I mean, I have that luxury because I sit at home and draw all day out of a studio, but that's not how I should be looking at that. Uh, I have to be like, okay, the, the reward comes after I complete the hard task, whatever that is. Um, but yeah, and, and as far as endurance, it's like you have to start off small and slowly grow that. So you have to go... You know, I'm going to draw for an hour today. And I mean a straight hour where I put on a timer, my phone, whatever. But I don't look at my phone. I don't look at YouTube. I don't look at any of this stuff. I'm just going to draw for an hour. And then increase that. You know, literally keep yourself accountable. Make a log of it. Whatever you got to do. Um, but yeah, you, you definitely have to do that. And then you increase that. Hour and a half. Two hours. Three hours. Yeah, I compare I compare it to like working out the same thing. You don't work out the same way all the time. You know, slow you up it. <laughs> what you write? Uh, what's your max bench, bro? Two sixty five. My goal is three eighty five though. If I can get up to three eighty five, I'll I won't give up. I just won't look to get past that. But I don't I don't know how I'm gonna get to three eighty five. It was. It's hard to like stay consistent at 265. I think different people just, you know, they're massively bigger and it's easier for them to get to that, but I don't know. Who knows? Skill and endurance are only bought with practice. Yeah. Practice and patience. Be patient with yourself. You know, false expectations are horrible for all sorts of reasons, but um, you know, I try to look at it like I'm not trying to be amazing tomorrow at drawing comics or whatever. Um, I'm just looking at trying to be a little bit better each day, each week, each month, each year. Um, I think that's, that's the best way to be about it because if you have these false expectations of yourself, you, you basically, uh, let me zero in on this a little more. You basically like set yourself up for failure and I don't like that like I'm you know you got to have these small wins um, to keep you going but yeah if you sit there and you go you know I got to be able to draw like Todd McFarlane like by next year that's probably not gonna happen <laughs> well it's not it's definitely not gonna happen but uh, you just shouldn't make those unrealistic uh, assumptions about yourself and um, basically painting a false narrative like you have to realistically the thing that you can do is become a better version of yourself over and over again and that's very attainable so that's like I love that movie uh, Limitless with uh, Bradley Cooper not the drug part but the <laughs> the overall concept of him becoming he says this part about imagine being the best version of yourself just that part minus the other parts but uh it's really cool like because that's actually attainable but we forget about that we, we get so uh hell-bent on being like our idols or whatever and not that that's a bad well it has to be taken into context it has to be um used the right way i am all for looking at people that are that are better at me at a specific thing and growing from that I'm not for comparing myself to them and then being mad at myself when I don't become 
them. I can't, remember, we can't do that, right? So it's like, we can't become them, uh, but we can learn from them. We can grow from them. That I'm all for. I love mentorship. I love, uh, uh, what do you call it, muses? That's all, that's all great, especially in art. Uh, but I try to be realistic about it as well. I don't know what they went through to get where they are. Uh, but generally, you can narrow it down to a pretty easy one, which is draw more. And you can bridge the gap. You could definitely work harder than somebody that uh, that doesn't put in enough time. I think that's one of the drawbacks to being uberly uh, talented, you know, or naturally uh, talented, or what do they call that? A uh, what is it when you're naturally talented? You're uh, I can't remember. Savant. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't think I want to be a savant. I don't think I am a savant. I know I'm not a savant. But um, yeah, because I, I know the type of character I am too. It probably made me lazy. But because I've had to work really hard at it, I appreciate it. My hand look all right. Yeah, so I think there'd be more of a shadow on the back of the hand because all the light source come in from here. And then probably a couple more of these little swirly things that I just kind of over do all over my artwork. Something like that. Maybe a couple little rendering lines. Okay, so now... We got a troll here, don't we? Yeah, I like that one. Draw about 20 poses a day. Definitely. You just draw poses as often as possible. Especially when you're sitting there drawing. Sorry, my camera's wobbling. It's If you guys saw this setup, it's, it's borderline dangerous what I got going on here. But uh, it is working, so we're all good. But I have a new piece of... Hardware coming in from old Amazon. Fill in Mr. Jeff Bezos' pockets because, you know, I figured he didn't have enough money. Um, that will complete this setup and then I'll be, I'll be good. <laughs> Face reveal. Yeah, here I am. I, I just wanted to show you guys that I am, I'm a gray-haired gray old man. Yeah, I was, that's the reveal. Look at this stuff. Oh my God. See what YouTube does here? It stresses you out. No. I've been gray since I was like 28 or something. I don't know. It's long enough to just realize it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. People my age still have color in their hair. <clears throat> no, not really. I guess now I'm actually getting to the age where people should have gray hair. So it's like, yeah, you know, might as well sport it. Um... But it, yeah, it sucked when I was 25 and I was predominantly gray. I was like, this is not fair. I started getting it significantly at eight, 18. I started getting gray hair. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I'm still trying to analyze this and see what else. All right, let me try to approach these buildings one more flipping time. I think what I'm doing wrong, too, is I'm mixing in some of the... Uh, I'm starting to try those buildings that look a little bit more... I don't know. Uh, like the ones you'd see, like, in Spider-Man or something. Inner City building, I don't know. When really, by the Stark Tower... Or Avengers Tower, you're gonna to see a lot more of the modern looking buildings, right? So let me try that, see if that helps me. Uh, I'm just gonna start again with some more basic shapes. Get these worked in. Want this? I 
the funny thing is when you draw the modern buildings they're generally a lot more simplistic um, streamlined I guess would be the way to say it you get, you get a lot more of these angles on the top You guys don't have to try to make me feel better about my gray hair, but thank you. I appreciate that. You guys are super supportive. <laughs> I know I'm bored. My hip hurts. No, I feel good, man. Like that's that's what I'm happy about. I'm 45, but I feel good. Getting ready to buy me another basketball room. Start bringing my kid up right, teaching him how to hoop. Alright, so any other questions here? We get it. You don't have to flex your superhero, super good art skills. Show us a bad drawing you have. I'd be surprised then. Yeah, thanks, Deadpool from Agency X. Big Deadpool fan myself. Even drinking from a Deadpool cup. Still got a little bit of coffee in here. Even though it's way too late for coffee. No, I, I honestly thought... Uh, I would be drawing buildings better than this today, but hey, at least at least it's honest. Like this happens some days. But I'm gonna just go with. I think I'm liking this like modern uh, version of the buildings. These little angles or whatever. You know, where's my roller? Oh, it's right here. It's embarrassing. Okay, let's get some of these windows in like this. See, this is where I like my, aha, my see-through ruler. And you can actually keep an eye on the other lines as you start to work over. Makes it a lot better. to go off my perspective here. And then I think to make the top make sense, because if I just leave that as an angle, I think it looks confusing, like, oh, did you just mess up on the perspective? But I think what fixes that is when you throw in the first set of windows like this, and then you carry these down, you know, through the perspective the right way this way. I think that kind of fixes it. Then you see this top row is just an angled set of windows. All right? Doesn't that start to make sense? I hope. And this is why, folks, you should always make time to draw your backgrounds so that you don't struggle with these concepts. I mean, because let's face it, if you're going to draw comics, you have to become an art machine. It's going to amaze me how these, these guys do it. When you're saying deal with the slight distortion because I'm drawn on a flat surface here, is that what you're talking about? 
Oh, and Elsie, it's not my birthday, but thank you very much for saying that. I'm glad the videos helped. Um, yeah, never give up. You know, like, this stuff with comics, like, um, I think that people just have to realize there's so many different ways you can utilize art, even if it's not exactly the way that you pictured it panning out. I talk about this all the time. You know, you see me drawing this. I'm not drawing this for Marvel. I'm drawing this because I love the characters and I love sharing this stuff on the channel. And luckily the channel has given me an outlet to be able to do stuff like this and make a living, right? So it worked out. It worked out to where I get to draw superheroes uh, and make a living. Um, I'm not the only person that can accomplish that. And, I'm, and this isn't the only way to do it. Uh, but if you think very uh, organically... Um, you think very fluid like about your life and where you can take advantage of certain things and, and, and go where you need to go. Opportunities, I think, present themselves as long as you're consistent with hard work and dedication. But yeah, don't give up. Never give up. Oh, gotcha. So a YouTube brat, which is a hilarious name, by the way. I can't believe I missed that the first time. Is saying, by slight distortion, I mean how how we draw on the drawing uh, is a bit tilted. How sometimes the drawing is a bit tilted by a few degrees. And when I draw a circle, from my point of view, it looks like a circle top down. It looks like an oval, something like that. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I don't know how to how to answer that other than you know, get yourself an art table that's tilted up a bit. Um, I don't see that a lot. Maybe this is already because I'm already, you know, I'm drawing an upshot anyway. So me sitting back here kind of is conducive to that upshot, I guess. But uh, but I have my art table right behind me. And to tell you the truth, like this setup was because I wanted to be drawing on my actual art table. Uh, so you get that art table, you set it up to what, 35 degrees, 45, I don't know what angle that is, 35 degrees. Not good with that stuff, but, um, and that should fix your problem. Um, and plus, it, it allows you to sit back more like this. I hunch a lot. I shouldn't be drawing like this. Um, so, yeah, there is that because long periods of time, probably why I do need to get up and take walks because I'm hunching too much as I go. Another thing is to sit at the edge of your seat. So, push your seat back, sit on the very edge. It forces you to, well, it doesn't force you, I guess you could still hunch over, but. I tend to notice that when I do this, I sit up straighter for a while, but I also maneuver multiple times, especially if I'm sitting down to draw something like this. It's going to take hours and hours, and then, uh, yeah, I'm constantly moving around. Oh, shoot, sorry, 6.15. All right, I'm going to have to bring this one to a close, folks. I wasn't realizing the time, and I got to go have some den, den with the fam, fam. So... Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching. Um, I know that uh, we took this a few different directions. Hopefully you still found it informative. And um, sorry that I scared everybody with my gray hair. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm aging like Benjamin Button, but no big deal. I'll be fine. Um, Let me see if there's any final questions I can answer here. Yeah, no problem, LC. Thank you, though. I, I, I'll still take it. I'll take that happy birthday for the next one. Appreciate it. You're just early for the next one. Um, yeah, so ID Crisis, that's a good one. I started drawing as a kid, then learned airbrush, then pinstriping, and that led me away from comics into custom paint. Channels like this have drawn me back into comics. It's funny you say that because, I mean, I'm sure you know if you watch the channel for any length of time, that's exactly what happened to me. I went into custom, well, not exactly. I didn't do as much airbrushing. I did a, pun, a ton of pinstriping, but I did vinyl. I airbrushed uh, a few motorcycles, a few custom paint jobs, flames and things like that. A few mur murals, things like that. But I did a lot of vinyl. So um, sort of a similar thing that detracted me into getting a real job with my art. And then I came back and then started doing more on YouTube and it led me into drawing comics and releasing my own book right there, um, which I'm working on another 
another book, by the way, for you guys that are interested in that. Um, another how to draw book, piecing it together, so it'll take some time, but I'll, uh, I'll share more of that as it progresses. And what else? Uh, what's the big reason you chose comic heroes and Marvel DC versus other characters or story makers or even other types of art? You know, all I can tell you is that comics, to me, are the most interesting media out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love video games. I think video games are amazing. I play certain games. I uh, really enjoyed that new God of War. That You know, now I'm waiting for that next piece. I thought it was kind of messed up. They kind of cut you in the half of that story. Wish they would have showed uh, Thor in that, whatever. We'll get that in the next iteration, hopefully. But um, I love games and things like that. But I always find myself getting into them intensely for a while and then stopping and going, man, I kind of want to create some of what I'm playing. I kind of want to be the person on the other side of the the curtain there, I guess, or whatever. Like, I want to make the stuff. I find that need to create and to make. So now you could say, well, you could get into uh, games and do that. And I, I guess that one of the things about comics that I like so much, for instance, like when you're the penciler, you're you're drawing that whole world, right? That's there's. I guess I like that. Maybe I'm a bit of a control freak or a narcissist. I don't know, but I like that aspect of it where when you are drawing the thing, you create that whole visual. Now, other people take it and run with it and make it better, right? The inks, the colors, you know, even sometimes other artists working together. T true, but uh, but I think in games and, and things like animation and stuff like that, you lose a lot of that. Like, you become more of a piece of the puzzle uh, or cog in the machine. Uh, I think somewhere I read back in the day, like when I was a real little kid, I wanted to work for Disney, but I read that, like, they put you in these this line work production so that you can't have a dramatic effect on the overall product. You know, like, it's their way to control somebody being too individualized and, and you know, um, affecting something over abundantly with their own specific style, something to that degree, and that's why they line worker it out or something. So for me, comics are the opposite of that. Comics are where you get to just spill your imagination on the page, and people love it or they hate it or whatever. Um, but that's that's one of the things that drew me to it. And I, I just got to be honest, when I first started picking up comics in the '90s, I was just so impressed by how intense the artwork was. I, I think what happened is I had remembered comics before then. I'd saw them, read a couple, things like Rom, I think was the first comic I'd ever looked at. And uh, and I looked at it, I was like, eh, it's cool, but I, it didn't hook me, you know. But then when I jumped in the 90s, it hooked me. It was like, whoa. Uh, I thought that I could draw, and I realized I couldn't. But now I was motivated and inspired to draw by these books that were just drawn so hyper and in, in, uh, intensively. You know, they're just so... So much eye candy. So that's that's really what did it for me. All those things combined. Uh, are you gonna ink this in another one? Yeah, I might. I'm gonna uh, persevere through the background, get that all in place, and maybe I will. You know, may, you know, I did a video recently where I showed you guys how. Well, I showed you that I was able to transfer this into a blue line onto another sheet of uh, Bristol board. Uh, in blue line uh, through my printer my um so maybe I should show you that process and then I can go to ink it because I'll tell you what it, it's so cool being able to do that like change it to blue in, in Photoshop cyan blue or all all of the cyan blue or whatever and then print it out on your printer if you you know you get the 11 by 17 printer if you can and uh, yeah it's just nice inking on Bristol board and then knowing that you're not hurting the original um, and yeah, you end up with an original pencils and ink. So maybe we'll do that for, uh, cause I, I would like to ink this one to tell you the truth. And it's so much easier to just want to go digital with it, but I, I'm trying not to do that. I really want to bring more traditional work to you guys. It seems to be like, that's what you guys want anyways, from the comments and things like that. Yeah. I like that ID crisis. So he says comics are the original foundation for all other media to come after so true like comics are the storyboards and the blueprints for to me all the great ideas i mean look at like today i'm gonna get off here i'm gonna eat is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna watch invincible uh i'm sure that's gonna be a great series you know developed by robert kirkman and uh the art looks directly connected and inspired to ryan uh, otley's uh illustrations which i think is great um yeah i mean look how look how good of a blueprint any good story sequence 
of comics are for for a director producer i mean it's like when they figured that out i don't know when you'd say they figured it out i mean they definitely implemented a lot now it's like they finally realized years ago that they could look at these comic books and go it's all right here these this is our our, our storyline this is our our storyboards for the entire movie uh and we'll just uh hodgepodge some things together neither tick fans off or or you know claim it as our own uh, but yeah it's like ha i don't know what 75 uh, percent of the work is done for them it's all right there in illustrative form so but yeah to me that's that's one of the things why i don't think you know people worry about comics disappearing and you know people saying oh you know comics are a fat or not a fat um they're uh they're becoming outdated they're gonna get beat by games and all this other stuff and I don't think that's true. I just feel like comics will, they'll die down and they'll come back up because of the the fact that people will realize that they can't really do without them. That those stories and the way that they're created is so conducive to to developing great stories and, and, and the length of stories uh, and such amazement. And then it becomes such a, a uh, you know, a way to connect into games and to movies and to uh, TV shows. So yeah, me personally, I don't see how comics would ever go away because that's where all the good ideas seem to be coming from right now. But I could be wrong. Would be the first time. What is that ruler? Inquiring minds want to know. This is a Weems and Platt roller ruler. Go buy one. Don't think about it. Just do it. Buy one. No, they're awesome. All right, so I'm going to get out of here, people. I really appreciate you guys watching. I got to go get some food. Maybe some chicken and broccoli. That sound delicious? Yeah. Not really, but that's what I mean. All right, so thanks, everybody, for uh, popping in and watching today. I really appreciate it. Uh, hope you like the new setup. I'll be bringing you more of these types of live streams. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. So thanks very much. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.